basically to dig them. And once they leave, because that, that would be a very good reason why so many civilizations, you know, thousands of miles across each other, different continents that don't even know each other, would all have gold and cherish gold and have gold relics and things like that and have these gods of the sun or moon or whatever because they come from, you know, up there. And you got to remember, too, they didn't have the vocabulary we did. So they wouldn't say uh, UFOs or crafts. They would call it something else, maybe a bird or a dragon or something. Well, it's not this. Something had to create those. And I think the humans were created by a, a race uh, of other humanoids. It, it came down to this earth. Again, you think about this. The pyramids could not have been built by any way any scientists claim that they were built. I've heard everything from canals being dug for 20-some miles and filled with water and barged these big stones in. That doesn't make logical sense at all. There's no way. Try pouring water in the sand and see what happens. Number two, yeah. to build the, the height of these pyramids with their technology, I mean, with the tools they had, no way. And the accuracy? No way. We still can't. Even Flow Industries in Kent, Washington, who perfected the water cutting jets, can't get precise is that what the, the, the pyramids are. So uh, they had to have technology far superior than anything we have to have built those pyramids. And all these other things like these landing pads in Africa and certain parts of the world, when you're up by satellite and look down at them, They've been there for thousands and thousands of years, but how, they didn't have anybody. It could have, you know, done it by ground with the technology they had. That's impossible. We have had help. So when I get these people that come in on my show, I'm sorry. I, I've been festering for a couple of days. I am, you know, mm -hmm. I am a Christian. I believe in God. But I'm not going to sit there and say that UFOs are demons because, well, you know what? The demon is probably you. It's claiming that they're demons. It doesn't make logical sense. We're not the only people in the campground walking around. And if you think we are the only one walking on uh, the campground by ourselves, then you are totally naive. Totally. And time travel? I don't know. I don't. Why would they need UFOs to do time travel? Think about that. See, we're, our problem is our intelligent level is still not there. So we're grasping for, at straws. That's my input on it. What do you guys think? Ryan? <laughs> I'll go ahead. Take, this, take it away, James. Well, I, UFOs, even by proxy, are actually time machines because uh, to come here from wherever they're coming from, whether it be using a wormhole or however they come here, it is, in essence, a time machine um, as far as us going. And I think we have. I think we have our own time machine somewhere. I, where it may be, I don't know. But I think we've messed around with time or government. And, I, and, I'm, and I think the Mandela effect is a byproduct every time we mess around with time. <laughs> That's one of my theories. Can't prove none of that, but but um, because I'm telling you, I've seen some weird things in my life. But anyway, that's what I think. And and yeah, you're right. Listen, you can go by Drake's uh, equation, and that comes out to roughly ten thousand intelligent life um, forms in our galaxy alone. Yeah, you know, I mean it's a hundred billion times a hundred billion. Do that kind of math. So. And that would come out to about 10,000 intelligent life forms. But I can tell you this much, just from looking on Earth, you can go to where there's a volcanic funnels, where it's, you know, the temperature under the ocean is hundreds of thousand degrees almost. Nothing should live there, but there's life living there. You can go to the coldest part of the Earth where nothing should live in rocks, and there's stuff living there eating rocks and things. So I think there's life abundance out there. I don't think some of it's intelligent. I think it's like, you know, on a molecular level or biological, like, you know, life form, like uh, viruses or germs or whatever. But uh, I think there's a lot, a lot of stuff out there. I, I do. Yeah, I do, too. I definitely agree. Another thing that gets on, uh, gets under my skin, too, is they're still holding back uh, photos from 
you know, the 70s, um, photos from Mars. I mean, what could possibly be so important that they can't let us see it by now? But uh, anyways, I agree with you, James. Uh, there's got to be thousands of other planets out there. And uh, I guess types of entities, I, I really do believe there's a lot of different ones. And yeah, I don't know. It's just, <laughs> it's a pretty crazy uh, thing to get into. But yeah, well, I, I agree with well, you for sure that they're well, either ultra terrestrials, either coming from a different timeline. And also too, time is our word we made up. You know, they might not even have a meaning for time. So no, that's just right. Don't forget. But yeah, I definitely agree with you. Don't forget our minute could be who knows to another planet, another civilization. You take a planet. It's like 10 times the size of Earth. The rotation of their planet would be a lot longer. So would you would, would you go by our time of our rotation of our planet or do you go by the, uh, you know, the, that planet? You got to think about it. What is time? We made time simply because of exactly. our Earth rotation. So if you come from another planet, yep. bigger or smaller, then their time is going to be completely different than our time. That's why a lot of scientists have a, a lot of problems with this because it doesn't go by our scientific, you know, methods. You know what I mean? It it doesn't follow the laws of physics, and that's our laws. You know, that's Earth laws that that doesn't say you know um let's just say a gray uh, he might not even follow that at all you know he might have something that's totally you know off the wall that we've never even heard about like i've said before we could be as smart as them they just figured out a different way to you know make something fly are you know? we as and it was sm- like a ryan are we as smart as them think about it if their civilization started a hundred thousand years before us or 50,000, or 200,000, or a million years ahead of us. They're going to be so more advanced than we are. We're nothing to them. Seriously, if you could go back into the 14th yeah, century right. and talk to somebody from the 14th century, you would come back and say, those guys are freaking morons. <laughs> you would. True, but you also, you got to think about this, too, is, you know... Uh, Leonardo da Vinci created a lot of things that, you know, uh, everyone laughed at. You know, let's say the bicycle. He made the bicycle. Uh, no one did anything with it. You know, four, five, I think it was 500 years later, they, they finally make the first bicycle. Now, they had 500 years where they could have had a bicycle. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I also think of it that way as well as, you know, uh, maybe they had some of this technology back then, but they chose to throw it away. You know, and well, I mean, I that, know that's another a, that's a possibility. Another thing, another thing, Ryan, what you're talking about there, especially back then, that you had to be careful with what you invented or came forward with because they would um, say you were messing with witchcraft or something uh, that was sacrilege or something. They'd just kill you. So that that hindered a lot of um, progression, as far as you know, or technology wise, way back. Just think about that. If you would have even yeah, exactly. invented a potato peeler at the wrong time, you would have been classified as Satan. That's you know right. what there was. A, this reminds me of a story. Uh, it was a it was a gift for I think uh, King Louis the I don't know the fourteenth. I, I I don't know if that number's right. But anyways, it was a machine gun, and he turned it down. He said, "No, this is evil." Matter of fact, the guy that gave it to him. Um, I think he was kicked out of the uh, kingdom. Um, but, yeah, it was a, a machine gun, of all things. And uh, they were like, no, we don't want this, and they destroyed it. You know, and that was, you know, 150 years before it was even thought up of. So, yeah, there's another example. Yeah, and, you know, another example was just our universe alone. You go back five, 600 years ago with these scientists. I, I, I can't think which ones, but, you know, they were talking about um, you know, the our solar system doesn't revolve around the Earth. It, we revolve around the sun. Well, that alone would almost got you exiled and killed. So, you know, this science alone would get people in trouble. And that alone will keep you from technologically advancing if your beliefs are so strong that you're going to punish them, punish people for advancing with the beliefs with science. So that's going to, you know, stall yeah, you get, right there. 
as early as the 30s, too, because uh, there was a bunch of Russian scientists who were putting gulags um, for, you know, I guess going out of their way, you know, uh, I guess uh, pseudoscience, as they wanted to call it. You know, those guys, they all got arrested. And then whenever, I guess, World War II broke out, then they were even hidden even deeper. And then after the war was over, they were still uh, kept in these gulags and, you know, for the stuff that they uh, discovered and the stuff that they were preaching about. But yeah, I mean, it just goes to show you how, you know, I mean, that's not even a hundred years ago that they were doing that. So I definitely understand what you're saying about, you know, witchcraft and stuff like that. And yeah, it's just, it's just wild that uh, we think this way. Well, what's real wild is when people take religion. Now, religion is one thing, but then trying to take religion and applying it to other things that maybe we don't understand. Again, like the other night, the the guy has been on a lot of talk shows at that granted for him. And he has a lot to say, but it's all wrapped around religion. It's all wrapped around that it's demons. If you believe that it tells me, then he doesn't believe that there is life on other planets that we only revolve by ourselves because you have ignorance. Yes, that is because if you believe that these UFOs, okay, or people being abducted is being done by Satan, then we got a problem. We, we do. And I, like I said, I festered for two days on this and I didn't know if I was going to even bring it up tonight, but I've been doing this a long time. I've seen so many reports of UFOs. I have had an encounter. A lot of people have had encounters. Did I see Satan when I saw my, that bright light? I don't think so. I, I, the thing is that the people are trying to justify objects, subjects to fit their beliefs. Now, I'm sorry. If you want to believe that there is 25 million cloak UFOs protecting Earth from what? I don't know. If you want to believe that UFOs are angels or demons, that I guess you can believe that. But I, you know, I am 68 years old. I've seen people actually go take suicide because they thought the earth was going to end. And I it repeatedly, this goes on every 10, 15 years, that a group of people that believe in the belief think, oh, we're at the end. I'm going to commit suicide. And a group of them commit suicide. Or that one group back about 10, 15 years ago that believed that a UFO was going to come down and take them, but they had to shed their human <laughs> body to do it. So what do they do? They all take yep. poison kill themselves now did they get picked up by a ufo i don't think so i mean this is where we have to start really looking at ufos and aliens and really start making a decision are they real or are they not are they demons i don't think so anyway we'll talk more about this after james does uh james does the news You're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio.